Hello learners, this is Sangamitra Suryapani from National Institute of Open Schooling. Today we will discuss and explain the second lesson of your senior secondary biology course that is the kingdom Monera, Protista and Fungi. Today we have with us Dr. Ranjana Saxena from Associate Professor from uh, Delhi University. Welcome ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, on behalf of our learners, uh, I would ask uh, as there are many organisms on this earth, how can we uh, classify them or is there any specific method to classify them to make them remember? Is there any uh, specific uh, method? Yes, Dr. Sangamitra, you are right that there are so many organisms on this earth and it is very difficult to remember all of them. And therefore, it was Linnaeus in 1900 who classified the organisms into two and it was known as the two kingdom classification. He divided all the organisms into plantae and animalia on the basis of whether they could manufacture their own food or can could move about. All those organisms which could manufacture their own food with the help of chlorophyll and sunlight were grouped under kingdom plantae whereas all those who could not manufacture their own food were grouped under kingdom animalia. Also there were plants belonging to the kingdom plantae could not move about whereas animals belonging to the kingdom animalia could move about. But the problem was that there are certain other organisms which are plant like in some respects and like the animals in some other respects. For example, there are organisms which can manufacture their own food and are autotrophs but at the same time they can move about with the help of flagella. Also there are organisms which have got cell wall like the plants but they are capable of moving about and therefore this classification of two kingdom classification was becoming a little disoriented or we can say it was not possible to define all the organisms into two and therefore it was Whitaker later on who divided or who classified the organisms into five kingdom on the basis of whether they were single celled or multicellular with a nucleus or without a nucleus and depending on that he classified the organisms into five kingdom, kingdom monera, kingdom protista, kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia. Mm. Kingdom monerae were different from the remaining four kingdom because they lacked a nucleus and therefore they were known as prokaryotes whereas the remaining four, the protista, the fungi, plantae and animalia all had a well defined nucleus in which was present the DNA and therefore they were known as eukaryote. So the fundamental difference between the kingdom Monera and the other four uh, kingdoms was that in Monera the, the nucleus is absent. Kingdom Monera consisted of two groups eubacteria and archaebacteria. As the name suggests archae means first. So it is believed that these bacteria existed first of all and were the primitive one and kingdom monera included both these u bacteria as well as the archaea bacteria. U means true so they are the true bacteria whereas archaea bacteria are the ones which um, they can live under very harsh conditions. For example they can live at high temperatures the other organisms are not able to withstand such conditions. Ma'am can you please give some examples? Of yeah methanogenic bacteria they live in sewage and also in the intestine of many animals. The thermoacidophilic bacteria they live in the hot conditions and the halophilic bacteria they live in salty condition. Now all these bacteria they are grouped under archaea bacteria because they are able to live under harsh conditions and also these archaea bacteria are different from the U bacteria in the fact that they have got a rRNA which is very much different from the RNA which is present in U bacteria. So now we shall be more emphasizing ourselves on the kingdom Monera because uh, we have already said the differences between the Archibacteria and the Monera. There are many more differences but we would be concentrating on the kingdom Monera. The kingdom Monera as I said U bacteria so now we are concentrating on the U bacteria. U means true. So these are the true bacteria and the fundamental feature that comes to our mind is that all the U bacteria are prokaryotic and just now I told you 
what are prokaryotic organisms all those organisms lack a nucleus. nucleus and if they lack a nucleus do they lack a dna no they don't lack a dna but the dna in them is not confined within the nucleus as they lack them but it is present in the cytoplasm and the area where they are present in the cytoplasm it is known as the nucleoid there is yet another type of dna known as plasmids which are rings of dna and these are present in the eubacteria so eubacteria have got plasmids but these plasmids do not take part in reproduction but they are very important because they contain genes for antibiotic resistance and this is very important from the biotechnology point of view as you can see here there it is a structure of the bacterial cell as a whole where you find that the bacteria is enclosed or the uh, the outer wall of the bacteria consists of a cell wall the cell wall in case of bacteria is made up of peptidoglycan now this peptidoglycan is absent in the plants because in the case of plants the cell wall is made up of cellulose, cellulose. whereas in the case of fungi the cell wall is made up of chitin so here you see that although the eukaryotes also some of the eukaryotes have the cell wall but the composition of the cell wall is different from the uh, prokaryotes the cell wall gives rigidity to the bacteria or it gives shape to the bacteria and also it protects the bacteria there is an additional layer which is present in some of the bacteria but not in all the bacteria which is outside the cell wall and this is known as the capsule as you can see in this the blue stars here where they are shown it is the capsule layer and the capsule layer like the cell wall protects the cell helps the cell to adhere to surfaces and nutrient and assists in retaining the moisture now inner to the cell wall you will find a plasma membrane or cell membrane now this is a membrane which allows the in coming in of the nutrients and going out of the nutrient it's a semi permeable membrane which allows certain substances to move into the cell and certain substances out of the cell also in this particular slide you can see that there are small thread like structures which are known as pili or pillars now these are proteinaceous in nature and they help in attachment of one bacteria to the other bacteria so pili are thread like structures which are very similar to the flagella yet they are different from the flagella because the thickness of this is very less as compared to the flagella also they are smaller in size and are made up of proteins so does they help in a uh, movement also no in movement it is basically the flagella which helps the bacteria in movement and you can see here as dr sangamitra you have rightly said that they have got flagella for movement they can have one two or they can have more than two flagella which helps them to move about um, also present in the cytoplasm are ribosomes ribosomes are cell organelles which are responsible for protein synthesis the other cell organelles like mitochondria golgi complex chloroplast etc are absent in them in other words the cell organelles bounded by a definite membrane are absent in them however you find these uh, structure organelles present in the eukaryotes now there is uh, uh, once you have understood the structure of the bacteria children you can have make a own bacteria on a thermocol and you can have a model of it which will be easier for you to understand for your revision also you can make use of plasticine different colors of plasticine for that you can have red plasticine yellow plasticine green or whatever color you like and with different colors for example for the capsule you can use one color make the outer boundary with that color to show that it has got capsule in order to that you can use another color of the plasticine to show the cell wall similarly you can use the third color to show the cell membrane and then the cytoplasm you could color it yourself on a you can make this on a thermocol and color the cytoplasm the dna which is present in nucleoids and remember they don't have a nucleus so this dna is present in the cytoplasm, cytoplasm. clustered <laughs> together 
and that you can show with some thread or you can use whatever material you can think of you can use that instead of plasticine you could use different colored threads for this and then they have a plasmid which is a round uh, DNA and that you can ring DNA so that you can use with another thread and make a circle and put it in the center similarly the ribosomes can be so shown with the um, uh, some other material like you can use uh, uh, bindis to show the ribosomes or you can show uh, stars to show the ribosomes inside the cytoplasm. Pili and the flagella can be shown with uh, threads of different thickness. Okay. Pili can be shown with the thread which is uh, very small and the thickness is also less. Similarly, you can show flagella which are long with long threads and the thickness could be more than that. So, once you have made this on a thermocol, you can keep it and that would be interesting and nice for you for the revision just before the exam. So, that is how you can really make your study easy. Isn't that easy for uh, the children to make uh, Sangamitra, the model of uh, Yes, ma'am. That is very easy and we will uh, show them how to, how we can make it. They also feed like any other eukaryote, even these prokaryotes feed and they have got different modes of feeding. For example, you will find that these bacteria can either be autotrophs, they can be saprophytes, they can be symbiotes or they can be parasites. Autotrophs like the blue-green algae which are also known as cyanobacteria. Bacteria. Now these as you can see here are green in color and the mere fact that they are green in color suggests that they contain a green colored pigment which is known as chlorophyll and with the help of sunlight, water and carbon dioxide they are able to make their own food. So, they are known as autotrophs. The saprophytes live on dead decaying organic matter and these saprophytes then they are helping us. How they are helping us is that they break down the complex uh, organic compounds into simpler ones and recycle the nutrient and at the same time they are enriching the soil. So, these uh, bacteria are helping us. The symbiotic bacteria Dr. Sangamitra, you must have heard of certain bacteria living in the leguminous, leguminous plants plant. and rhizobium. these uh, rhizobium, yes, rhizobium that lives in the root nodules of the leguminous plants and in the process it is converting the nitrogen into amino acids so that these amino acids can be taken up by the plants for their own food. They convert atmospheric nitrogen into, into uh, the yes. ut uh, utilitic uh, nitrogen. Yes, they uh, uh, convert the atmospheric nitrogen into to utilize, utilize the, the, the uh, atmospheric utilize. nitrogen. Yes. Yes. And uh, these then are taken up by the plants as food and the plants in turn are giving them the shelter. Similarly, we have got parasitic bacteria. Now, these parasitic bacteria are harmful and they cause diseases. So, on one hand, we have bacteria that are very important for us and our, our friends and at the same time, we have bacteria which are our enemies because they are causing certain diseases. So, there are many uh, pathogenic bacteria and uh, beneficial bacteria. Yes, there are many pathogenic as well as beneficial bacteria. I will be talking about them mm -hmm. later also. So, now, these so, yes. ma'am, uh, uh, you have already told us that uh, there is a mitochondria and Golgi bodies are absent. So, how uh, this breakdown of food takes place into that? Yes, that is a very good question. In the absence of mitochondria, where does the food, uh, breakdown uh, of food mm. takes place? Well, they have got certain organelles which are known as mesosomes. As you can see here, the red colored ones are mesosomes. It is in these mesosomes that the food breakdown of food takes place and the energy is made available to them. And these monorins can respire both aerobically and anaerobically which means that in the absence of oxygen also they are capable of uh, respiring. Just like any other eukaryote, these uh, monorins are able to reproduce both asexually as well as sexually. Now, asexual mode of reproduction is by binary fission, whereas sexual mode of reproduction is by conjugation. The usual method of reproduction in these bacteria is by asexual method. Now, in this you can see here that in the first slide, the DNA is present at a hard compact structure in the nucleoid. Remember that nucleus is absent in them, so it is present in the cytoplasm and you can see the plasmid as well. 
Now, in the second slide, you find that the DNA has replicated. You can mm. see the two different colors. In the third slide, the DNA has moved to the two opposite poles. When the DNA has moved to the two opposite poles, the cell body, it goes uh, in vaccination or the cytoplasm moves inside. And as it grows inside, the complete break occurs and you can see in the fifth slide that the cytoplasm has uh, totally gone inwards to meet the two ends as a result of which the two daughter cells are formed. Now these two daughter cells separate out. The one strand of the plasmid is shared by each of the daughter cells and the other strand is made by each one of them. So now both the daughter cells are independent bacteria and can move about. In this particular slide, the same thing has been discussed. Uh, they can also uh, reproduce by sexual method and this sexual method of reproduction takes place by conjugation. Okay. Now in conjugation, one of the bacteria acts as a donor bacteria whereas the second bacteria acts as a recipient bacteria. The donor bacteria gives out a pillus. Pillus, I have already told earlier, is made up of protein and helps to join with the other bacteria. So this pillus joins with the recipient bacteria or attaches with the pillus of the recipient bacteria and a protoplasmic bridge is formed between the two as you can see here. And the one strand of the plasmid goes into the other and their exchange of material takes place and one strand of this gets into the other one and a new strand is formed. Ma'am, can you please tell our learners about uh, the examples of asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction? Is there any particular specific no, example? specific for uh, as such for the sexual, any bacteria could go in for a sexual and asexual. Cyanobacteria that is the blue-green algae, the usual method of reproduction is by the uh, mm. asexual method only. Uh, once learners or students who have learnt about the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction, you can again do some activity. Practice it yourself. If you have understood it carefully, you can enumerate the differences between the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction in bacteria on a chart paper, draw the diagram and write the differences. So you can revise it yourself, uh, the differences between the two. Just as you have made a model of the bacteria cell, bacterial cell, you can make a model of the asexual method of reproduction or the sexual method of reproduction with any of the available material. You do not have to go to the market to buy the material. These materials will be easily available at home also. So you can make the model. Ma'am, what are the economic importance of these bacteria? Yeah, just before we were talking about the useful bacteria and I told you that they are both beneficial as well as the harmful mm -hmm. bacteria. So we will talk about the useful bacteria first. As we have already said that these bacteria like the rhizobium lives in the root nodules of the leguminous plants and picks up the atmospheric nitrogen to make this available to the plants as their food and in turn the plants are giving them protection. So they are helping us in converting the atmospheric nitrogen into useful compounds so that it can be utilized by the plants. At the same time, there are certain other bacteria like the soil bacteria, azotobacter, which are found in the soil and feed on the dead decaying organic matter. And as they feed on the dead decaying matter, they are getting the food all right, but at the same time, they are converting the complex food material or the complex organic matter into simpler compounds as a result of which the nutrients are not only made available to the plants but also they are recycled back into the atmosphere. And since they are feeding on the dead decaying organic matter, they are also cleaning our environment by removing these dead decaying organic matter from our environment. You are, all of you must be eating curd at home and you must have seen your mother setting curd at home. What does she do? She takes uh, one teaspoon of curd, already set curd and then adds, adds milk to it and warm milk, a little warm milk and then leaves it for 3 to 4 hours depending on the temperature. And after that, when you see it, the curd is set. Now what is set in the curd that sets the milk or that converts the milk into curd? It is the lactobacilli which are present in the curd which acts on the lactose sugar which is present in the milk and converts into lactic acid. And it is this lactic acid which is responsible for setting up of the curd. So you see that how these bacteria are very useful to us. 
And do you know when you fall sick, the doctors at times, not always, gives you antibiotics. What are these antibiotics and from where do you get them? Of course, for you these are medicines to cure the diseases. But these antibiotics are prepared from bacteria only. For example, streptomycin is made from streptomyces bacteria. So you see, on one hand, I have told you so many useful things about bacteria, but there are certain harmful bacteria also. As I have already told you that these bacteria can cause deadly diseases. You are all aware of typhoid, cholera, tetanus, diphtheria, etc. All these diseases are caused by bacteria only. And for example, cholera is caused by Vibro cholerae, typhoid by Salmonella typhi. There are many more diseases. Now, what you can do as an activity, you can find out the names of various diseases which are caused by bacteria and the booster doses or the doses that you have got at the time of birth. And what are the preventive measures and control? You can take the help of your parents or internet or your elders for this particular activity. So, you, now you know that bacteria are not only useful but also they are harmful to us. So, the ma'am. Kingdom Monera consists of simplest structural organism and they are the first living forms which have evolved on this earth. It is believed that they are the first ones to have come on this earth, first prokaryotic organisms to have come on this earth. So learners, I hope this uh, lesson or uh, this program gives you the better understanding about the Monera characteristics of uh, organism belonging to this uh, kingdom. Thanks for coming to our studio ma'am. Thank, Thank you so you. much ma'am. Thank Thanks to our learners. घर बैठे पाए राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी एन में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत एन से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं एन में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश देने में सहूलियत मिलती है एन में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले एन की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें पंजीकरण के बाद लॉगिन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र को लेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट लें। इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रीकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से, जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में दे हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के सम्बद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों आरोप दस दिनों में पहुँच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज न लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है
ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने भी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम उठे और जागे learners welcome to the national institute of open schooling today i am going to talk about kingdom monora but before i start with this let us recall about this kingdom you have already learned in the previous lessons that it was witticker in 1969 who classified the various organisms into five kingdom kingdom monora kingdom Protista or Protista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia, and he did this because there are diversified organisms which are found on this beautiful planet Earth. So, to, in order to differentiate each one of them, he grouped them into certain groups depending upon their similarities and differences. The Monorans were the first organisms that came on this Earth. these are prokaryotic unicellular organisms whereas all others are eukaryotic protistan or protista they are unicellular but they are eukaryotic that is the cell organelles are defined and are enclosed by a membrane plantae animalia and fungi on the other hand are all multicellular organisms they are eukaryotes initially the fungi was placed along with the plantae but because they are not differentiated into the three distinct regions root stem and the plant body that is there is no differentiation of the plant body therefore they were grouped separately into kingdom fungi the plantae as you all know can manufacture their own food animals are heterotroph so whitaker group these into five kingdoms later it was also found that since these prokaryotic bacterians were the first one to exist on this earth they were known as archibacteria and they included two groups one was archibacteria and the other was eubacteria Now the archibacteria are the true bacteria. Archibacteria are the primitive ones that can survive under extreme conditions of the environment. Now archibacteria, these include all the bacteria they, that occur under harsh conditions. For example, methanogenic bacteria they live in the sewage. In fact, these are the ones which are used for the sewage treatment. They are also found in the intestinal tract of cows. thermoacidophilic bacteria live in hot springs on the contrary halophilic bacteria 
they live in the salty lakes and rivers. Let us see the various eubacteria. As you can see here, they are of different colors, shapes, etc. So these eubacteria, they include all the microscopic organisms. They are prokaryotes. Prokaryotes that the cell organelles in them like mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. are absent in them and they do not have a well-defined nucleus. They include the bacteria and blue-green algae. The blue-green algae are now known as cyanobacteria. They are all unicellular organisms that they are single cell organisms. So the moment we say prokaryotic unicellular organism, immediately it should come to your mind that we are talking about the bacteria, the cyanobacteria that is we are talking about the kingdom. Monera. We are talking about the eubacteria. Let us now study about the various parts of this unicellular organism. They consist of an outer wall as you can see in the diagram and this is known as the cell wall. The cell wall in them is made up of peptidoglycan. Now this peptidoglycan is unique to the bacteria only and is not found in the plants which also have a cell wall but it is not made up of peptidoglycan. Below the cell wall lies the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. The cell wall protects the cell and also gives its shape. In some bacteria as you can see in the diagram it is surrounded by yet another layer which is known as the capsule but that is only in some of the bacteria. From the cell wall Certain thread-like structures that you see in the diagram, they are emerging out. These are known as pili. And these play an important role in joining the two bacteria during reproduction. The cell membrane encloses the cytoplasm and the other structures which are present. Well-defined nucleus with a nuclear membrane is absent in them Therefore, this DNA lies in the cytoplasm and is not enclosed by any membrane. Now, the region where this is present is known as the nucleoid. This plasmid also reproduces along with the DNA, the other DNA, but it contains genes for antibiotic resistance and other sex factors and therefore is beneficial for the bacteria where it is present. You can see here in the diagram that a long thread-like structure is present which is much thicker than the pili that I have just told you. This is known as flagella. These flagella make the bacteria move about freely. The cell organelles are absent in these prokaryotic organisms except that they contain ribosomes which are required for protein synthesis. Dear learners, now you can do a little activity which will make you confident and will make you realize that you have understood the concept of a prokaryotic organism. You can take a thermopole or you can take a cardboard and with the help of plasticine you can make a bacterial cell. You can use the various threads of different colors and thickness to show the pili and the flagella. So if the mitochondria is absent in them then how does the cellular respiration takes place in these prokaryotic organisms? Now this cellular respiration takes place in certain organelles which are known as mesosomes. You can see these mesosomes here in the figure as internal extensions of the plasma membrane. So the cellular respiration takes place in these mesosomes in the absence of the mitochondria. The respiration otherwise is both anaerobic as well as aerobic. Reproduction too in these monorins are both by asexual method as well as sexual method. As you can see in the figure, the asexual method of reproduction takes place by binary fission. The DNA as you can see here replicates first and as the DNA is replicating, the bacteria cell starts growing and enlarges in size. And once the DNA replication is complete, the two DNA moves to the two op opposite poles of the bacterial cell. 
A constriction, as you can see in the diagram, appears in the middle and deepens. And finally, it results in the formation of two bacterial cells which separate from each other. Each one is a daughter bacterial cell which has its own DNA and it's capable of independent existence. Sexual reproduction also takes place in bacteria. As you can see here, there are two bacteria. One of them is known as F plus bacteria and the other one is known as F minus bacteria. The F plus bacteria contains a F factor which is responsible for the sexual reproduction. And this is the one which will give the DNA to the other bacteria which is the F minus bacteria. The donor bacteria carries a DNA sequence called the fertility factor or the F factor. Typically, the genetic material is in the form of a plasmid or a smaller piece of DNA. The F factor in the cell allows this bacteria to produce a pili. As you can see in this figure, the pili which is given out from the bacteria that contains the F factor would form a protoplasmic bridge between the two bacteria. Plasmid is nicked and a single strand of DNA is transferred to the recipient bacteria, the bacteria that did not contain the F factor. Both cells then synthesize a complementary strand to produce a double-stranded circular plasmid. Both the bacterial cells are viable donors now. The genetic material transferred during conjugation provides some genetic advantage to the recipient antibiotic resistant genes, sex factors, etc. and therefore is more advantageous than the one which is devoid of it. You can list out the differences between the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction on a chart paper or you could also make the various steps of the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction with the help of plasticine as you have done earlier on. Do you know how curd is said? Well, you would say that a small amount of curd is added to the milk, warm milk that is, and then left aside for a couple of hours depending upon the temperature and the curd is said. But what is the scientific basis of it? It's basically the lactobacillus which is present, which at a particular temperature converts the milk into curd. So you see the advantage of this bacteria. At some point or the other, we all have taken antibiotics as prescribed by the doctor because when we are not well, the doctor prescribes us antibiotic depending upon the disease. And do you know that many of these antibiotics are obtained from these bacteria? You're all aware of penicillin, which was the first one to be discovered, which was obtained from a bacteria, Penicillium notator. We should not forget that many of them are harmful also and can cause various diseases that are typhoid. You know that it is caused by typhi bacteria, cholera by vibro cholerae, tetanus, diphtheria, tuberculosis. These are all caused by the various bacteria. You can do yet another activity and for this you can take help of your mother. You can make a chart of the various diseases caused by bacteria. Remember only by bacteria. The causative agent of this disease, the preventive measures and the control. Now this will help you out to keep these bacteria away so that you are free from all the diseases. I hope by now you must have understood the basic concepts of Kingdom Monera, in details about the various systems you will be doing later on. Dear learners, welcome to the National Institute of Open Schooling. Today I am going to talk about Kingdom Protoctista and Kingdom Fungi. Now I will talk about Kingdom Protoctista. I mentioned earlier that Kingdom Protoctista is also known as Protista and just like Monerans, they too are unicellular organisms. If they are unicellular organisms, then why are they not placed under 
monorails? Yes, they are not placed under monorails because they are eukaryotic cell. Eukaryotic means they contain the cell organelles and a well-defined nucleus in the cytoplasm. That is, they have membrane-bound organelles, mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, etc. They have a protoplasmic grade of organization. And just like monorails, these are also microscopic. They cannot be seen with a naked eye. Locomotion in these protectistins is either by flagella or cilia or pseudopodia. And reproduction is either asexual or sexual. Just like the monorails, they too have a diversified nutritional mode. They can either be autotrophic or saprophytic or parasitic or they can be, they can feed on other organisms. Kingdom protista includes six phylum, phylum protozoa, phylum bacillariophyta, which includes all the diatoms, phylum phaeophyta, which includes the brown algae, phylum chlorophyta, which includes chlorella, phylum rhodophyta, which includes red algae, phylum umycota, which includes phytophthora. Phylum protozoa is divided into four classes. Class rhizopoda. Rhizopoda include all those organisms which move about with the help of pseudopodia. Example is amoeba. Class flagellata. As the name suggests, flagella means whip-like. So this class includes all the organisms which move about with the help of flagella. Example is euglida. Phylum protozoa also includes class ciliata. Ciliata, as the name suggests, moves about with the help of cilia. So for example, paramecium. One of the examples that we are all aware of is plasmodium. And since they live in the body of the host and do not move about, they are grouped under group sporozoa. Here in the diagram, you can see three beautiful protozoans, amoeba, paramecium, and flagella. And what difference do you see in all these three diagrams? You see that in the first one, that is amoeba, it is irregular in shape. And you can see the flowing extensions of the cytoplasm, which is nothing else but pseudopodia. So it belongs to the class rhizopoda and moves about with the help of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia also helps this animal in capturing the prey and forming a food vacuole where food is finally digested and given out into the cytoplasm and to carry on the various activities of life. The excretion in them is not required because they live in water, but they do have a osmoregulatory mechanism which is carried out by the contractile vacuole. Euglena has got a whip like flagella, the flagella that you saw in the case of the monorans, but there is a tremendous difference between the structure of the monorans and the eukaryotic flagella. So both of them have flagella for movement, but the structure is different in both. Euglena are autotrophs and can manufacture their own food. And as you can see in the diagram, they contain chloroplasts, which contains chlorophyll, which is required for the synthesis of their own food in the presence of sunlight. They have got a certain mouth, unlike the amoeba, where the food is taken up by forming a food vacuole with the help of pseudopodia. Here you find there is a mouth or a cytostome which leads into a gullet and then the food is pinched off into the body as food vacuole. Paramecium, where the whole body is covered by cilia. So the movement here is brought about by these cilia. Also, the difference between amoeba, euglena, and paramecium is that paramecium contains two nuclei. One is the micronucleus and other is the macronucleus. The micronucleus is reproductive in nature, whereas macronucleus is vegetative. Chlamydomonas has got flagella and it can also move about with the help of this flagella, as you can see in the case of euglena, that the nutrition in them is diversified as you find in the case of monorails. And we have already talked about 
the different modes of nutrition they can either be parasitic as i've said that the parasitic ones will live inside the body of the host for example is trypanosoma leishmania and can cause diseases leishmania causes kalazar where the trypanosoma causes sleeping sickness in human beings they can be autotrophs for example euglena which can manufacture its own food with the help of chlorophyll they can be saprophytic or they can be heterotrophic just like in the case of monorenes here also you will find that reproduction is either sexual or asexual asexual reproduction takes place by binary fission so it is the nucleus which is first dividing followed by the cytoplasm a constriction appears in the middle which deepens that is a furrow appears in the middle as you can see in the diagram which further deepens and ultimately the two amoebae are formed sexual reproduction is also found in some of the protistas for example you find sexual reproduction in paramecium which is by conjugation in case of paramecium you will find that two paramecia they come close together and a protoplasmic bridge is formed between the two as you can see in the diagram exchange of genetic material takes place through this protoplasmic bridge remember exchange that is from one paramecia genetic material would move to the other it is not one going into the other it is both ways and further meiotic division etc takes place so here you find that all the sexual reproduction is taking place it is different from the higher forms in that the two whole individuals are involved in reproduction i would now talk about fungi as i have already said that some of them may be macroscopic can you think of any macroscopic fungi i am sure some of you must have it is the mushroom why because some of us must be eating the mushrooms but all mushrooms are not edible some of them are poisonous also so we should be careful of what mushroom we are taking so these mushrooms are macroscopic otherwise the majority of the fungi are microscopic they are filamentous in nature and are made up of hyphae except for yeast which is oval in shape or round in shape we can say these hyphae are fine branching and they are usually colorless threads now when these hyphae are joined together or they form a cluster then they are known as mycelium now these mycelium if they are in cluster then why is it that we are not able to see them next time when you go to the market or when your mother brings mushroom or those who don't eat the mushroom can go to the market pick up one mushroom the moment you turn the mushroom you will be able to see these hyphae or you will be able to see these mycelium and therefore because these hyphae are small in size we are not able to see them these hyphae are found hidden in food they are hidden in soil they are hidden in rotting wood so what do we conclude from this we conclude that they are found everywhere so you can found they are diversified in their habit you can find them in all the niches the nutrition in hyphae is only by absorption they can absorb the glucose very easily and they are saprophytic they feed on the dead decaying organic matter as you can see here there's something coming out body of the fungi what is this these are enzymes so these enzymes are known as zymases now these zymases they break down the complex sugar like sucrose which can be not be taken up by these small organism so sucrose is broken down into glucose and then the glucose is absorbed into the body in other words the food is absorbed by these fungi some of the fungi are also parasitic and can cause diseases yeast is a very good example of saprophytic fungi which can absorb glucose reproduction in them is both asexual as well as sexual asexual reproduction is by budding fission and spore formation now there is no uniqueness in the budding method of reproduction in fungi a bud appears grows in size constriction appears and it detaches itself from the mother cell and leads a independent 
existent. This is what is uh, by budding. A constriction appears or a break in the body appears and the two separate from each other. Not all the fungi are useful. There are harmful fungi as well. They cause diseases. To name a few, athlete's foot, ringworm disease. You find this ringworm disease which is very common during the rainy season or during the hot summer months. You also find that these fungi can cause harm to the plants. That for example, it causes red rust disease in wheat, which is patches on the leaves and the stem of the wheat crop, as a result of which the yield of wheat is reduced. And if this wheat, which has been contaminated by the fungi, is eaten, it can cause cancer even in human beings. Today, we have talked about the kingdom Monera, Protoctista, and fungi. And I hope the three kingdoms are crystal clear to you people and you can now identify the various animals that can be grouped into the three kingdoms. Thank you.